Hi, everybody. Welcome to the SOS Salon Business Success Podcast. I'm your host, Bonnie Bonadeo. Welcome, you guys. Welcome to the show today. So I'm going to be going live at the first of the year, uh, doing some Facebook lives. But, you know, if you want to watch the video series of these, you can catch them on YouTube, of course. Or follow me just if you like the audio version and you're a podcast kind of person, you can listen to it on Anchor, Spotify, and several other um, podcast um, platforms to be able to go. All right. So as you guys know, each and every week, um, I have created a podcast around a particular formula. All right. And the formula, of course, is, you know, the SOS formula, and it's called Save Our Salons. So what we're doing is we're building brands that survive while developing people that thrive. So that's kind of the whole foundation of the SOS coaching program and podcast is to be able to help brands to survive. Now, I say building brands that survive because the truth is each and every one of you are capable of building a brand that becomes bigger than you. Um, but the only way that that's going to happen is if you have the right knowledge, the right uh, consistency, the right support team and resources, and we call this TME, time, energy, and money, time, money, and energy, to be able to take your business to the next level. And, um, you know, most people kind of like fall into that category where they've started a small business, but then they don't have the resources or the time or the energy um, and to be able to take it to the next level. I want you to be able to take it to the next level. And I think 2021 is going to be a great opportunity for us to be able to do that. So the strategy that we've talked about is really it's, you know, SOS standing for Save Our Salons, of course. But the truth is, is that this isn't just a podcast for salons or spas or people in the beauty industry. This knowledge is accessible to any small business in order to be able to succeed. And what you have to do is you have to look for those strategic opportunities that will equal success. We inevitably try to do too much, um, too, too much, too much to be able to get us to this place where we think we're making a difference. But the truth is, is we have to really kind of target our energies, target our resources, target our focus to be able to say, this is a very strategic process that I'm going to do. And I'm going to consistently do it until the end. And that, you know, that was really one of the harder lessons that I had to learn because I'm an explorer. <laughs> I like starting new things. I like doing new things. So to do something over and over and over and over again actually bores me. Um, I did, you know, and in many cases I did radio shows uh, for five years. And then I, I really, I trusted that that was the right thing I was doing at the time. But I also knew that I needed to narrow my focus down from beauty inside and out and beautiful brands inside and out to really help the, uh, the, 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 the clients I was most closely related to and supporting. And that was the salon owners at this time. So we're going to focus in on this strategic process here, sales operations, mindset, marketing, and education. So each and every week I tap into one of these topics. Uh, in a broad sense and, and also in a narrow sense to be able to help you understand that if you are clear that these are five broad strategies and then how to be able to narrow them down to be able to help you to grow your businesses, okay? And today we're talking about my favorite topic, marketing. Marketing, which I am a firm believer that if you understand the elements of branding and marketing, that you will understand sales, you will understand operational, uh, parts, you will, you know, mindset is very much attached to it because your brand is you. It's the essence of you. Marketing is just how you implement it. Okay. And as your host of the SOS podcast, you know, it's, I want to bring you guys relevant information each and every week. I want to bring you tips and tricks that you can apply that can help you to be able to make a difference in there. So that's what I do for my coaching clients. That's absolutely what I want to be able to do uh, for all my listeners on this podcast. So even though I just started out this podcast a couple months ago, I'm getting some good traction on it at this point in time. Um, and I'm looking forward to going into the next year with actually converting these to live sessions as well. So obviously I'm recording them. They're on audio files. They're on video files. I'm going to go live uh, come January. And uh, it really kind of uh, pushed this out a little bit more. Okie dokie, let's start with our topic today. So marketing is the main strategy we're working on. And as you guys know, I create this entire genre of this, of my SOS program around the fact that I have been 
very interested in boating and sailing. And um, this year has been really difficult for us to be able to experience all of the boating and sailing that we want to. And so I kind of tied the content in and the analogies and the theory around boating and sailing so that I could continue to practice the vocabulary. And when I get back on the boat, uh, when I get back to being able to sail on a regular and ongoing basis, I will have a better understanding of it because I'm practicing by the vocabulary. I'm practicing the language of success in that arena in there. So today we're going to talk about managing the lines. And managing the lines is probably one of the more difficult things for me. And the reason why is because to some degree, when we learn something new, some of you might be like me where you have a very curious mind and you need to understand the process. Well, how does, if I do this, how does it work over here? If I do this, what's the next step and the next step and the next step in order to get the results that I'm looking for at the end. And so, Part of, part of the success of, of understanding process is that if you can repeat, you can understand and you can repeat process, then you can plan for success through consistency. And of course, you know, uh, my coach says repetition is the mother of mastery. So when you keep doing things over and over and over again, they start getting very easier. When you repeat things over and over again, it starts getting, you know, you start comprehending it more. So managing the lines is really something that was not easy for me to comprehend because you have to understand that when you're on a sailboat, you have all these lines and halyards and sheets because they're all called something different. They're not just called one thing. And they're certainly not called ropes. That was the biggest le learning lesson that I needed. Which rope do I, do I pull? Which rope do I release? Which rope do I not, you know, type of thing. So it's, lines is kind of the general sense of that. <laughs> and uh, it was probably one of the harder things and still is one of the harder things for me to understand because you have to have an engineer mindset. You have to think through the process in order to achieve the right results. And you guys all know this as, as salon owners, most of you are licensed cosmetologists. So you also understand that there's a process in how you cut hair, color hair, start a procedure, to complete a procedure. There's a way to be able to do that. And when you understand it and you can visualize how it's going, um, then you know you can be more successful. So I know that one of the things that I really prided myself on when I was behind the chair and working as an educator for a major manufacturer was corrective color. Like I was fascinated in the corrective color arena because there was a process that you had to go through in order to fix things, in order to achieve a different result. And I loved experimenting with it. And I also loved teaching about it um, because sometimes we can't visualize what it should be unless we understand the process of what we're doing and we understand the language of that process of what we're doing. So with marketing being a topic today and managing the lines being the title, I want you guys to first and foremost understand that marketing is sales with a plan. That's all it is. So if you are going to be marketing your business, you're going to be creating a selling plan of what to do. Now, the strategy behind this then is, yes, you have many, 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 many things that you're selling. Okay, you're selling all kinds of retail, you're selling all kinds of services, um, and depending on, you know, how your business is set up, you might be selling the same items at different price structures based on experience um, or level of service. Okay. So if you look at everything that you're selling in there, then, you know, part of what you want to be able to do is you have this foundation of, okay, most people are coming in and they're wanting haircuts. Most people are coming in and they're wanting highlights, say. But the truth is, is you have to understand the process of all of those. And Maybe marketing your most popular service is not what you need to be doing. Maybe it is. So let's talk about that a little bit more when we figure out how we're going to be able to like, what are our lines in our business? What are those lines that we're talking about in selling versus, you know, lines on a sailboat that we are pulling here? So as I kind of said that, you know, lines, sheets, halyards, like knowing the ropes, Okay, really understanding the ropes of what's happening and understanding that in sailing and through life and through business. Okay, if you pull one particular rope, you're going to have a certain impact or action that's going to happen. 
If it's the wrong one, it might be a negative action. If it's the right one, it might be a positive action. And we can, guys, this is just basic information here. We know this. But in, in sailing, the most important thing you need to learn is which line performs which duty, okay? So when you understand what potential business has the greatest impact to have you selling more, that might be the one that you put your attention into strategically to grow your business, okay? To grow your business. Now, I use this in the SOS hiring boot camp that I did last week. I talked about it from a perspective of if you've hired a new person and you have a menu that has 20 different services on it, maybe not all 20 of those services your new hire is comfortable with. Okay. So you need to determine not only a strategy to help promote them, but also to get them better educated so that all 20 of those services they could be comfortable with. But let's say that they say, okay, I'm very comfortable with these three services. You would strategically market them as a new person, okay, in the salon based on those three services. So you're going to put together either a promotion or you're going to just market them out as a, you know, come, a new person has joined our team, um, book today type of thing. So it could just be an awareness campaign. It could be um, a little bit more of a promotional campaign. Um, where you're offering a savings, a discount, a gift with purchase, something like that. Or it could be what we consider to be more of an educational campaign. You're educating your community or your client base on something specific around a service that they might be interested in and want to book with you, okay? And we'll talk about more about that when we get into education um, next week as well. So sometimes the lines can be confusing. Sometimes the strategy can be confusing. Sometimes where we need to apply strategy can be confusing. But once you learn it, once you understand what line will create what impact or result, then you will know the next time and the next time. And then you can start building that level of consistency. It's okay to repeat things over and over again. You know, sometimes it, it, they used to say back in the day that it takes nine impressions in order to... Um, get somebody to even just notice you, not take action with you, just notice your brand. Well, with today, because, you know, things fly by in nanoseconds, it takes a lot more than nine tries in order for people to take notice. So again, repetition is the, ma is the, mother, of, <laughs> is the mother of mastery, okay? The more you can repeat things, the more it is. And when you get really good at marketing as a business, you will understand that you probably have three different strategies going on simultaneously. One strategy might be awareness. One strategy might be client acquisition, whether it's uh, communicating something to an ex your existing clients or whether it's communicating something to get new clients. And then the third strategy might be uh, you know, a team member acquisition, looking for new hires, hiring people for your business. Um, because the truth is, is in our business, we, we should be in recruitment mode all the time. But if you're in recruitment mode all the time, you also have to understand that you have to be in uh, training mode all the time as well. So awareness is part one of that campaign client acquisition part two. So we're gonna talk a little bit about client acquisition. And then part three would be team acquisition, okay? So new hire acquisition. So in the, in the opportunity to be able to market your business, you have to be able to decide, first of all, you know, what, what's your ideal platform that you're working on, okay? And there's several of them. And you could be applying them to several, but you have to decide which one are you most comfortable with right now? Which one is the one that is going to give you the greatest impact, okay? Now, people dis email campaigning all the time. But the truth is emails are still a very, it's a very valuable resource to be emailing your clients because you can make it more intimate. You can uh, make it more specific. You can target it where you can't necessarily target it as well on social media. Okay. Uh, you can speak directly to your clients. You can speak directly to a portion of your clients um, in the offering. So email gives you ultimate control over strategy a lot of times. Social media 
is uh, great for awareness campaigns. Social media is great for broad campaigns. Um, social media ads can help narrow things down a little bit, but again, you're making that, that point, then you're having, to, you're making an investment and you got to be really clear on your strategy if you're going to make the investment in social media advertising. Okay. Of course, your website is a great resource as well. So you can change things up on your website and still push it out via email and still push it out via social media. But the truth is nobody just goes to websites today unless you lead them to your website, okay? We go to Google to search you. And a lot of times because of algorithms and, and SEO, your website may not be the first thing that they pop onto, but your website creates a very legitimate, um, uh, focus of you. If you've got a really quality website, if you've got a good website, if you've got a website at all, then they, it appears that you are a legitimate business. Okay. Now going into 2021, I promise you guys, I'm going to work strategically with you to get your websites more in alignment with it being a selling tool for you. Okay. A selling tool because most of your websites right now um, don't, bring in or don't create that action for clients to want to buy from you. All right. And then of course there's text messaging as another platform option to be able to, um, you know, gain new clients. Now this is becoming a very popular opportunity. However, it's, it, again, you have to be very strategic about it. I'm not opposed to people text marketing me. Okay, sending me promotional information and I can easily put stop to, you know, to remove myself from a text messaging list. But if you do text messaging, it has to be very short, succinct, and it has to have a very powerful call to action to it. In other words, it has to be um, a special promotion, a limited time offer, this week only, uh, Thursdays only or something like that, that entices people to take action. It can't be, you know, more of this emailing that's long and lengthy and storytelling in a sense. And it can't be on social media. It's not visual. There's no pictures necessarily attached. You can do links that can drive them to another um, opportunity. So you could put a link in there that drives them to a landing page, to your website, to a video. Those are options for that. But the truth is, is if you're going to text market, you have to just be good at being able to put a short, succinct message together that calls somebody into action without sending them somewhere else. And when you can practice that and get good at that, the next phase would be is to, you know, do more video advertising, um, you know, have images and everything on your text messaging network. And of course, the final platform that you already know, and you're probably utilizing this to the best of your abilities is in real life. Okay, so we are an in real life business. People have to show up into our business in order to have the actual service done. And so being service driven in this sense, is um, you know really where we have to hone in our skills. We have to get really good at marketing when a client walks in our door, sits in our chair and gets a service. And the truth is, is we could be better at marketing in real life, okay? We're missing out on huge opportunities to grow our business by thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars every year because we're not doing a good job of in real life marketing. Okay. There's that, that fine line of the relationship with the client. And there's that fine line of providing the service to the client in such a way that they take advantage of upgrading into additional services, upgrading into buying home hair care, um, upgrading into pre-booking their appointment, upgrading into creating referrals for you from with their friends and family. When you can really be good at marketing, your in real life marketing, of course, is the most powerful resource that you have. But we cannot discount that we are in 2020 going into 2021 and digital marketing is got to get, it's got to level up. We've got to be better at doing digital marketing because clients now expect this 
as a way for them to be informed, as a way for them to be able to communicate with us. So and as I was referring to text messaging just a minute ago, I was referencing text marketing specifically. But if you don't even have a text option for you know, confirmations or cl for clients to be able to confirm or cancel appointments, that might be the step that you need to take. And that would fall into more of an operational strategy versus a marketing strategy. Um, all roads lead to sales, okay? And marketing is sales with a plan. So all roads lead to marketing in order for sales to happen. So you can see how this strategy that I talked about on the front end of our, of our show here makes a lot of sense here. So if thought is the wind, knowledge is the sail, then mankind is the vessel. So people are interested. People are thinking about maybe trying you. People are thinking about referring you. People are thinking about going somewhere. Knowledge, how you represent yourself, how you connect with them, that kind of knowledge is very powerful. And of course, once they come visit you in real life, you know, that's going to determine their, their level of loyalty, their, their level of consistency with you as a uh, salon or a service provider in there. So it's, there's, a, there's a lot to it, but I don't want to overcomplicate it because the truth is, you guys, you need to keep it simple. Remember, the more simple you can create a strategy and the more targeted you can do outreach, the higher level of service that you'll get in return, the higher level, high, higher level of service that you will get in return. So SOS could also mean save our salons. It could also mean a strategic opportunity for success. But here's a third opportunity, simple outreach of service. Okay. We are a service-based business. Your goal is to be able to get people to walk in your door. Your ultimate goal, you don't necessarily get paid. Your number one revenue source is for people to walk in the door and get a service. We'll talk about multiple revenue sources that you might want to consider going into in 2021 um, as I align with some great companies to be able to um, showcase to you guys what else could be available as multiple uh, revenue resources in there. All right, so we want to be able to keep the strategy simple, okay? And here's, here, here's, Here's how I'm going to talk about it. Whoops, I kind of went too fast. Hold on, I'm going back, my notes. Here's how I want you to think. You have to decide, and when you can answer these questions with clarity, when you can answer these questions with clarity, then you can commit to consistency. So what do I want to market? Who do I want to market it to? Why do they need it? Where Am I going to market it? When am I going to market it? And how am I going to complete this process? In other words, how is going to be the process? How is going to be, you know, which line you're going to use in order to get the sales up and the sales, um, you know, direct in the sales to be able to get the wind in the sales, to be able to move 